Verse 36 declares, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a, of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, you know, when Simeon was there in the temple and he said, saw the Messiah, she came in in that instant, the Bible says in verse 38, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And we're concluding this series today. I'm going to read the rest of the verses to you, and then we're going to apply it to our life. How can we apply what we have gone through in this gospel of Luke? What really matters? I'm going again to continue reading on in um, verse 39, it says, so when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Verse 41 says, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days and they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. Verse 47 of the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, declares, And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. You know, they were upset. Hallelujah. They didn't know where Jesus was. Hallelujah. But Jesus, but they did not understand the statement for which he had spoken. Because it says in verse 49, and he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business. Hallelujah. What really matters? Let's look at all and and apply this to our life, all of the text that we have read throughout this series and apply it to our life. What really matters? It all came down to this day when Jesus went back to Jerusalem, when his parents went back for the festival. And one thing that I want to per point out, the first thing that I, I'd like to point out, what really matters is that Simon, um, Simeon gave us one of the reasons that, you know what, we look to Jesus for our salvation. For Simeon had said when Jesus went into that temple and he received the fulfillment, Simeon received the fulfillment of the For prophecy. For it says in the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, the 26th verse, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Hallelujah. So I would advise each and every one of you that are listening to this video, don't die without Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't die without accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That's what really matters because when you stand before God, you have no defense. Jesus is our defense. Jesus is the one that paid the price for our sins. Can you stand before God, hallelujah, without a covering? No, you, you cannot. So I would advise you 
to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That's what really matters, that we have this great salvation that has been given unto us. The second thing that really matters that I want to bring out of the text and apply to our life is that we must worship and serve him, telling others about him. Isn't that what the prophet is um, Anna did after she had been, you know, she was in that temple and she overheard the conversations, no doubt. And she began to go out and she began to tell others about the Savior. It says over in the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, the 38th verse, and coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Isn't that what the Lord told us? Hallelujah. To go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel. Aren't we supposed to be witnesses telling others about the Savior, letting everyone know that Jesus is alive? And I would think even more so now, when we look at what's going on in the world today, when we look at how Israel is under attack, you know, these are the people that God used to birth the Savior, to bring forth the Savior. They also gave us the word of God. How much more should Christians be praying for peace in Jerusalem? Hallelujah. How much more should we be, you know, praying for them and supporting them and standing behind this people? And some might say, well, you know what? They rejected Jesus. But the Bible says uh, that we should be provoking them to jealousy. What are you doing with your life? How are you provoking them to jealousy? Hallelujah. That they might want, you know, to give their lives back to the Lord and acknowledge Jesus. The day is going to come when they do it, recognize Jesus. But for now, who are we to judge? No, we are to pray for them as the Bible declares. Hallelujah. Pray for their protection. Pray that their needs be met because you know what? It's an attack of the evil one. Do you think Satan is happy that these people were able to bring forth the deliverer? They have been on his radar from the beginning, but I bless God that he's given me the mind to pray for them. He's given me the mind to lift them up and support them. I pray that you would support them as well as the Lord work out you know, all things in Jerusalem and Israel. If you look at the Bible, if you know the Bible, all these things must come to pass. You know, all of these nations are going to eventually come against Israel. But Jesus, hallelujah, that's when he's going to step on the scene. And when Jesus steps on the scene, it's all over. It's a wrap because there's none greater than our God. So again, what really matters is that we accept Jesus as our salvation. Secondly, that we tell others about this great salvation following the examples in the text that we have just read. And finally, um, Jesus said in verse 49, or the scripture says, and he said to them, well, actually, I can say that Jesus said when he was a child here on this earth, he said to his mother and his father that were frantically looking for him, he said, why do you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Are you about the father's business? Hallelujah. Are you giving yourself wholly to him? Are you going to church obeying what the scripture says not to forsake fellowship? You know, are you sitting under good teachers and, you know, giving what God has using your gifts as well. You know, Jesus was not only being taught, but he was questioning these scribes and Pharisees. Oh, God has a place for us all in the kingdom. God has purpose for us all. If you are still alive, what really matters once again is that you give your life to the Lord. You serve him and tell others about him. And when he returns, hallelujah, he will be pleased with us when we have been good stewards over what God has given unto us. He gave us the best when he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, to pay the price for our sins, to pay, you know, and die, pay the debt, and to die the death that we could never die. Oh, hallelujah. I give God praise for all that he has done. Thank God that we have come to the knowledge of what 
really matters. Know today that the Lord loves you. Know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, stay strong in the Lord. Do his will. Give him your whole heart and your whole life. Hallelujah. And keep your eyes on Jesus because hallelujah, he's coming back soon. One of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.